The Life of Bree Tanner Bree Tanner was a newborn vampire created by Victoria in order to fight the Cullen family in her army of newborn vampires. Despite her act of surrendering and showing adequate control of herself, she was executed by Felix of the Volturi on Jane's orders. She was the main character of The Short Second Life of Bree Tanner, an Eclipse novella, a spin-off story that was told from her point of view. She had a brief romantic relationship with Diego and a friendship of sorts with Fred before she died. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Bree Tanner. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Early Life Bree was born in Nevada on March 11, 1990, but lived in Idaho for most of her life. Bree believed that her mother had left her abusive father when she was four. In truth, Bree's father murdered her mother. He buried the body in the desert, then packed up and moved to Idaho with his young daughter. Because of the abuse, Bree felt isolated from her peers. She was a quiet, withdrawn girl. No one ever noticed the signs of her abusive home life despite some physical evidence. Finally, Bree could no longer stand his abuse and ran away from home a few weeks before her 16th birthday. She had enough money for a bus ride to Seattle, but nothing more than that. She tried unsuccessfully to get a job and began stealing in order to eat. She slept in parks and alleys, any place where she felt a little bit safe. Her biggest fear was that the police would catch her and send her home to her father. She'd been on the run for less than three weeks when Riley Byers found her behind a restaurant, picking through the trash bins. He offered her a burger, then took her into a dark alley where Victoria turned her into a vampire. After being introduced to her new violent peers, she did her best to avoid them by lingering around Fred, who was gifted with the power to repel people especially after she got her arm ripped off by Jen at one time, though she managed to get it back before she could burn it. Unbeknownst to her, her mother's bones were found by the police, and when they did not find Bree, they were led to believe that she had met the same fate and arrested her father for both murders. The Short Second Life of Bree Tanner One night, after three months of becoming immortal, Bree went on a routine hunt in the city with Kevin, a blonde vampire who called himself Spider-Man, whose real name was Casey, and a disciplined vampire named Diego. When Kevin and Spider-Man started fighting over a human victim, Bree and Diego went hunting on their own and used the time to get to know each other. She realized that he was unusually kind and well-disciplined, unlike her savage coven. They started going over what they'd learned about their coven and came to the conclusion that their leader, Victoria, wanted to add numbers to the army, and selecting smart ones wasn't necessary. When the sun arose, Diego and Bree hid in an underwater cave. They later discovered that vampires weren't vulnerable to sunlight, but rather sparkle like diamonds. When their army left Seattle without leaving a clue, Bree and Diego set off to find them on their own until they finally caught their scent and followed it to their new location. Bree and Diego followed Riley to tell him of their discovery, only to find out more than they'd expected to about the world of vampires when the Volturi approached Riley and Victoria. Diego proceeded with his plan while Bree went back to the group and awaited their return. However, Riley later told Bree that Diego had gone with Victoria to watch the Cullens after he informed the army of the plan to destroy the Yellow Eyes. He seemed hard and cold to Bree. That was why Bree was suspicious of their real agenda, but she decided to stick with them until she met up with Diego. When the army departed for war, Bree's new friend, Fred, decided to leave and explore the world and asked Bree to join him. Although she wanted to, she decided to find Diego. At the battlefield, she watched the Cullens and the werewolves destroy her army, but found no trace of Diego and realized that Victoria and Riley had already killed him for discovering the truth about the sun. Carlisle and Esme Cullen offered her safety in exchange for her surrender, which she accepted. When Jasper Hale saw her, he instinctively crouched to kill her, but Carlisle stopped him and explained that Bree had surrendered. Jasper disapproved but was convinced by Esme to leave her alone. He agreed not to kill Bree if they let him watch her, since he knew how newborns act. Eclipse Bree was the last of the newborns to be killed. Once Victoria and Riley were killed, Edward and Bella made their way over to the rest of the Cullens, where they stood by Bree. She found it very hard to resist Bella's intense blood, but managed to barely keep herself under control. The Volturi soon arrived, at which point Jane questioned the group. While acting ignorant to everything they discussed, Bree provided secret information to Edward of everything she knew through their thoughts. Jane concluded Bree was a criminal, despite her ignorance of the laws and the Cullen's willingness to take responsibility for her, and ordered her to be killed after torturing her with her power. Knowing that the Cullens were kind, 
She was grateful for their protection over her, despite her being their enemy. She made no resistance and was destroyed by Felix. Before she was, however, she sent her dying wish to Edward, to be nice to her one surviving friend, Fred, if they were ever to cross paths in the future. Carlyle was deeply saddened by what happened, as he would have welcomed her to his coven, and expressed that invitation to both Bree and the Volturi to try and keep Bree alive. Afterwards, Bella wondered if she would become like Bree as a newborn, to which Alice replied, something like that. In the film, Bree's experiences were quite different. She was changed shortly before Bella's graduation, and only went along with the army to feel safe. During the majority of the battle, she mostly hid behind a tree and watched in horror as her army got slaughtered, until Carlyle and Esme Cullen found her. Seeing her fear, the Cullens offered her asylum in exchange for her surrender. Unfortunately, the Volturi refused to spare her life, and in the end, the Cullens could only witness her demise. She screamed and tried to resist Felix to the very end. Physical Appearance Brie was described as a young girl of about 15, though she really was 16 when she turned. She was said to be slender with chin-length dark hair, though in the film her hair extended to her waist. She possessed the glowing red eyes, which were originally brown, indicative of a newborn vampire and the hard, cold skin that glittered under sunlight. She also had a high-pitched voice and a shrill scream, demonstrated from when she was being tortured by Jane. Personality Brie didn't like being a vampire, although she had grown used to it. She had a hobby of reading and would pretend to read when she was bored or just wanted to stay out of trouble. She would also occasionally steal from bookstores at night to keep herself occupied during the day. She was able to see through some of Riley's empty promises and was always careful not to draw unwanted attention to herself. Like the others in the army, she was told about the traditional vampire legends being real and at first was afraid of wooden stakes in the sun. When she discovered these couldn't harm her, she was relieved. Although she was allied with Victoria and her army, she was merely playing along to ensure her own safety because no one had told her about the laws of vampires. Brie had shown some amount of maturity even for a newborn. She demonstrated a great amount of self-control by resisting the lure of Bella's blood, especially for a newborn vampire. When Felix was about to destroy her, she showed no fear to her upcoming death, only because she already wanted to die because of Diego's death, and deeply appreciated the Cullen's attempt to protect her and used her thoughts to tell Edward everything she knew before she died. Did you enjoy the video? Be sure to tell us in the comments. And make sure to subscribe. And check out these other great videos from the Amagi. If you'd like to support me, you can also subscribe to my personal channel. See you guys tomorrow.